successful in this session, which is Clipper Heritage Trail Volume 2 with Glee Woodworth. My name is Bethany graf -Durow. I'm the Executive Director of the Museum of Old Newbury, and it is my pleasure to be part of the volunteer team of the Newburyport Literary Festival. This is our 17th year bringing authors and readers together. Now, it is my honor and my pleasure to introduce my friend, Glee Woodworth. Glee is a 12th generation Newburyport native. We haven't figured out how we're related to each other yet, but we will at some point. Well, uh, Her first publication, Tiptoe Through the Tombstones, Oak Hill Cemetery, won awards from the New England and New York Book Festivals. She is the creator and author of Newburyport's Clipper Heritage Trail, a series of self-guided tours accessed via a website and smartphones. The Clipper Heritage Trail was an American Association for State and Local History Merit Award winner in 2014. Clipper Heritage Trail Volume 1 was published in 2020, and Volume 2 is scheduled to come out in the summer of 2021. Oh, oh 22, so in the fall of 22. There you go, 20, 2022. Uh, Glee was honored with a Distinguished Citizen Award for Benevolence to the Newburyport Community in 2016, presented by Mayor Donna Holliday and the Spirit of, of Adventure Council of the Boy Scouts of America, and was the recipient of the Pioneer and Partnership Award from the Essex National Heritage Commission in 2017 for her contributions to Newburyport's local history. Trained in gravestone restoration, Glee has restored over 1,200 gravestones in Oak Hill Cemetery and other burying grounds. Thank you for all your community work, Glee, and off you go. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Let's get started. Bethany's going to load up the slideshow. We're going to see some great photos of old new record. So welcome. And uh, again, the new report Clipper Heritage Trail. I created this first with a website and then about a dozen years ago. And then um, a few years ago, I decided to put uh, the Clipper Heritage Trail in book form. I started out with one book and it was just too big. I had to split it up into two volumes. Uh, next, please. And the, next, the idea of these self-guided tours is, and I heard this from feedback. This was all feedback when I was giving cemetery tours and, and so forth. And I wanted the tours to be user-friendly. So whether you're sitting in your comfortable chair at home um, or out and about in town, and you could go at the time uh, when it was convenient for you. The book is also a lot of uh, hundreds of images and I've heard feedback from people saying, oh, I just, uh, I just wanna see images and said, that's it, that's great. We've got plenty of images. Also the book's set up so that you don't um, need to start in the chapter, chapter or tour one. You can just open up any page and begin and enjoy. Okay, so we see um, what's here in the background for all you local folks, you must know this in the background here along uh, the horizon is Plum Island. Yes, that's correct. And um, down in the foreground is Inn Street. And where do you think we're standing? You know where we're standing? Unitarian Steeple for that beautiful view. Next, please. Okay, here we go. Okay, so there's volume one right there, the, um, the uh, book cover. And the volume one, uh, <clears throat> published in 2020, focused on the downtown area. Next, please. And very proud, uh, the um, volume, uh, Trail Volume 1 won awards, uh, New England Book Festival, honorable mention in the wild card and uh, regional literary, uh, literature categories. And in the uh, organization of Reader Views, it received a five-star review and also a gold award in the classics and uh, nonfiction category. So very proud of that. And what a, a wonderful tribute uh, and compliments to New Report. Next, please. Okay, and uh, so volume two, this time, this book uh, will be uh, focused on from Maudsley State Park to Plum Island. So all over New Report. Again, there'll be nine chapters of tours, maps and legends, about 90 locations and about 400 images. Next, please. Okay, and this is a rough draft. I am in the editing process. Um, and this is an example of uh, volume two. I'm looking at that photo. So please give me some feedback if you like that uh, photo. That is a ship 
a vessel up on Merrimack Street getting ready to be launched. Mm -hmm. Next, please. Okay, um, I, as I said, I always use a lot of different images uh, to help tell the stories. And you can see here up on the uh, upper left, we use a lot of maps. Um, and then in the middle, this is um, uh, a painting by Laura Coombs Hills. So uh, sketches and paintings on the right, uh, regular photographs. And Newbyport has one of the best collections um, of photographs in, in New England of our community, West, which includes West Newbury and Newbury. We're very fortunate. Um, gravestones, talk about some of the, the people and their final resting place. I used a lot of silhouettes down here at the middle bottom to um, illustrate uh, the different types of ships. We had uh, Newbyport made dozens of uh, different types of design. And so you get an understanding of what those ships look like. And on the bottom left, of course, is uh, one of my favorites is the city directories, the uh, business ads. I love, love the city directories. Thank you. All right, next, please. Okay, so it, uh, each of the tours um, has this title page. I'm not going to read through every uh, uh, topic, but you can see along the water's edge, the Great Fire of 34, the cotton mills, the Caldwell's Distillery, Toll Manufacturing, Cos Ferry, and the Essex Merrimack Bridge. All right, next. Um, and this is an example of a map, okay? So uh, I've got a great team uh, who's working with me. Uh, Paige De DeRosa Walsh, she's my graphic designer. This is the third book we've worked together on and uh, she's amazing. I just kind of uh, uh, give her folders and, and lots of um, files and images and she somehow understands what I'm trying to do and she puts it all together, magic. And then my uh, editor Marlene Switzer. Uh, she has been in, this is my second book with Marley, and she also helped me with part of the Clipper Heritage Trail website. So a great team effort. Next, please. Okay, so where are we? All you local folks, put, put your thinking caps on. You know, if you've been to my presentations, I like to a lot, uh, uh, like chat through the presentations and ask questions. So can you recognize where we are? This was the Great Fire of 1934. Look at over there on the left, the big sign is Bossy Gillis. He was all over town with uh, gas stations. This is at the corner of Bridge and Merrimack Street. And so right now it's the kayak place here and we're looking towards the river. And um, fortunately no one uh, passed away during this 34 fire, but it destroyed um, a couple blocks of uh, businesses and homes. All right, next, please. Okay, oh, look at this photograph. This is kind of tricky. Think about where you're standing. We're looking across the river. And that's right, Rings Island. We're standing on Rings Island, Salisbury. We were looking across, and what is this area here we're looking at? What is it today? Cashman Park. Yes. Many of these buildings and homes were taken down. The rail trail crosses through here and a beautiful view of the river. Okay, next. Oh, we're headed up Merrimack Street. You all know this uh, building, you know it. Yes, the toll building, absolutely. What was the first use of the toll building was the Ballad Rifle Company. Um, and uh, eventually, uh, businessmen and the Toll family uh, produce silver here. Next, please. And what a view of this, isn't it? Where do you think we're standing? Think about it. Might be tough. Moulton's Hill, Mosley State Park, where Moulton's Castle is. Looking down at one of those bridges on the left. Here we are. Essex Merrimack Bridge on the left. Look at the covered bridge. It's not beautiful. And then what's this island called? Deer Island, correct. And then on the right is the Chain Bridge. Yes, great photograph. Okay, next please. All right, now 
I split up Merrimack Street because obviously you see how uh, how many um, locations and people I wrote about. So I split up and put the shipyards and shipbuilders in one uh, tour. And here's some shipbuilders. There were dozens and dozens of shipbuilders starting from the late 1700s to uh, the mid 1800s. Uh, and so here's just a few highlights of shipyards. Uh, the larger shipyards were on uh, uh, Merrimack Street, uh, also down in the early 1700s downtown uh, on the waterfront. Next, please. So here we are, the ships, the vessels being built. And you can see most of the shipyards would include two vessels at the same time. And this is the framing here, along here. And now they're starting to plank the vessel. And, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, most of the time, there was a uh, there was a large vessel and a smaller vessel. You can see all of this lumber here in the forefront. The men had to go out into the forest to cut this lumber, and um, so uh, they would uh, work on the larger vessel, and the smaller pieces were used for the smaller vessel. Did I say that right? The larger vessel than the smaller vessel. Okay, next. Ah. Uh. Look at this. Well, this is a typical shipyard gang. Look at these guys, huh? Now, what's missing? Well, black folks. There were slaves in the shipyards. Yes, the New Report everywhere um, in New England, um, <clears throat> but no pictures of them as of right now that we have found. This is a shipyard gang. There were gangs who specialized in framing or planking or the caulking or the so forth, the blacksmithing and they would go from shipyard to shipyard. All right, next please. Uh, how about this photograph? Isn't this beautiful? Okay, so we've got the small buildings. So there was work done, the blacksmithing and so forth. Uh, this this um, is the, well, it was the old Currier and Townsend um, shipyard uh, at the foot of Ashland Street. And again, you can see the two vessels. There's a smaller vessel here. This is the Symington. This was the William Currier uh, shipyard at this time. And uh, it's almost ready for launching. And what is the background here? What is this here? Do you know this? Right, Cars Island. This is Cars Island. And so when they launched a ship, they had to be very, very careful because if it was too steep of a grade, they would go down and they would get stuck in the mud. If it was too flat of a grade, so to speak, they would fly across the surface of the river and end up getting stuck at Cars Island. So it was quite the science uh, to launch these ships. Right. Next, please. And there's a launching right there. Beautiful. Hundreds, thousands of people would show up for a launching. Children would get out of school. And you can see this vessel has no spas and no masts and so forth. Well, what they would do is they'd launch, they'd float the ship down below the uh, bridge, 1829 bridge or the 1840 railroad uh, and down to uh, the downtown area. Also Cushing's Wharf was probably the most famous, Riggers Wharf around the area of uh, Starboard Galley now on Water Street. And that's where they would rig the masts and the spas and the sails and so forth. Beautiful photo. Next, please. Okay, and here, here is the John Currier. Uh, it was uh, all uh, dressed out, rigged at Cushing's Wharfing, and now it's getting tugged out to the mouth, through the mouth of the river and probably off to Salem or Boston. Now, they usually towed the ships all the way to Salem and Boston, and why do you think that is? Think about it. The ships when left New Report, they usually did not have cargo or much cargo. So if they left the uh, mouth of the river and then they set sail and they didn't have ballast, they didn't have weight, some of the, these ships would have been blown off to uh, all the way across to Africa. So that's why they were tugged to the cities to pick up their cargo. Wonderful photograph. All right, thank you. Uh, next, please. Okay, two or three around the frog pond. Obviously, we had Bartlett Mound. I can see. Okay, 
and it's uh, the courthouse, schoolhouses, uh, the old jail, Guinea Village, uh, and the burying grounds. Next, please. Okay, here's some beautiful photos. You know what you're looking at. We are so fortunate to have this um, beautiful frog pond and the courthouse um, right here of 1805 um, was built. What is this uh, steeple right here? You know this, St. Paul's, correct. And then what is this over here on the left photograph? That is a schoolhouse. Yes, there were schoolhouses on Bartlett now. Okay, next please. All right, think, think, where are we standing? What street are we looking down? Yes, we are standing in front of the courthouse. We are looking down Green Street. And what is this building here? This is the old Putnam Free School, which eventually uh, became Newbyport High School when the Brown High School and the Women's High School combined with Putnam. And what is this? You recognize the steeple? Uh, probably not. This is the IC Catholic Church. And when the fire in the 1940s destroyed the high school, the steeple caught fire. And fortunately, they were able to save the entire uh, Catholic Church except for the steeple. So that's why you see a different steeple today. Next, please. Okay. What do we have here? We are very fortunate. We have so many photographs as part probable of, of New Report in the area because of this gentleman here. This is about 1939 or 40. This photograph is talking, uh, is taken by Dr. Henry Perkins. And we are looking at, correct, the jail, the Auburn Street Jail that was built in 1825 and the frog pond is in the foreground. Right. Next, please. Oh, this is a map from the Museum of Old Newbury. How excited was I? Kristen sent this to me. Okay, let's take a look at the map. Um, this is High Street on your right. Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> Okay, here we go. All right, High Street on the right. Here's the Frog Pond. This street is today Greenleaf. It's a path right now. There's the first powder house where they kept all the ammunition, right? There were a couple houses here uh, on, uh, on the Mall. This is Pond Street. This in 1729, uh, Snelling, Dr. Snelling don donated the land for Old Hill Burying Ground. Uh, this is Auburn Street here. And this is the area where it was known as Guinea Village, where African-Americans lived from the late 1700s to about the mid 1800s. Now, you know the pond for you local folks, if you go down Auburn Street, excuse me, the large area, green area. And I've always wondered, were there poor people buried here or African-Americans or someone who couldn't afford gravestones? Well, here's the answer. And what's that say? Pond, it was a very wet area. So that's why there were not um, any burials there. And in this area here, we have African-Americans about right here buried. All right, next please. Okay, here we go. Tour four. Um, had to break up bound for three roads and beyond into, into two parts. Um, again, um, going through edits. Uh, we've got uh, Rufus Sargent, our architect, Waldo Pierce, um, an artist, the YWCA, the Route 1 bypass, Quaker Cemetery, and some uh, folks, uh, Joseph Wilson, the ship carver, and Jane Andrews, the teacher. All right, next please. Okay, oh, how beautiful is this photograph? Isn't this wonderful? Okay, you local folks, what are we looking at? Take a look, let's start to the left. What is this here? Yeah, the Baptist church, different steeple. Okay, the steeple was taken down in the 1940s. 
What's this building next to the right is City Hall built in 1851. The next building here is the Phillips building. And Dottie Phillips, uh, who passed away in her 90s several years ago, she told me that when her husband took the third floor down, uh, she was angry for years with him because she didn't want him to take it down, but he did. And of course, on the right is our beautiful Unitarian Church. Huh? What a wonderful photo. Okay, next please. All right. Anne Withington. This is one of the stories I added. Um, Anne uh, was uh, fought, she was a Newbery, Newbery uh, girl. She fought for social justice and she was very big into the suffrage um, movement. And here are headlines from the Newbyport paper. And in 1921, here is the ad that we had over 2000 women registered and voted. So I tell that story. That was uh, pretty incredible for the amount of women that they were able to uh, register to vote. All right, next please. Here we are, okay. Now a hint, when you're looking at old photographs, what's this sign here? It kind of usually designates a railroad crossing. Yes, where are we? This is the Washington Street and the Clipper City Rail Trail passes through here now. And this photo on the right, the right corner, and this photo lower right is the railroad depot. When the railroad came through Newbyport to, uh, to parts uh, to the north, um, they built a railroad uh, depot here. And the first, um, proposal for a railroad cutting through Newbyport was going over the Mall, And the residents said, no, you're not gonna do that. And so they cut through. And uh, this right now here is, you know, our condo uh, buildings. Okay, next please. Okay, what are we looking at? Let's look at the left photo. And here is a hint right here. What church steeple is this? Yep, St. Paul's. This is uh, the beginnings of the Route 1 bypass cutting through. And uh, there are about 100 houses taken down uh, for this bypass. Uh, so, you know, boy, that might have been, there was probably a lot of controversy for this. And then the lower right photo, kind of thinking, well, where are those houses? Very cool. This is the High Street overpass. So these houses are all gone. To the right is Summer Street and St. Paul's where you can't see uh, in the picture. So these houses were all taken down for the Route 1 bypass. All right, next please. Okay, all right, where are we standing and what are we looking at? Okay, we're kind of in Midtown. And yeah, that's right. We are standing in Cushing Park or some people consider Cushing parking lot. All right. Uh, and on, I had to say that. And on this here, this building here, you know, this, this is Ken Street and these are the condos here. And this building here on the right and kind of like a steeple uh, was the Burley uh, and Stephen Shoe Factory. And then over right is the mill building here where there are condos. Nice photograph. Okay, next please. Okay, tour five, we're moving up along High Street area. We have Ethel Reed, who is a wonderful uh, designer of posters. Many of the uh, magazines had uh, posters, beautiful artwork. William Ashby, the uh, abolitionist, at the Little Family. James and uh, Ethel Parton, the writers, Ann Wellington, oh, uh, edits needed, uh, Ackerson Common, uh, Laura Coombs Hill, the artist, and the Powder House. All right, next, please. Oh, look at this photograph. All right, folks, you local folks, where are we? What are we looking at? This is, yes, Mount Rural, where Newbyport High School is now. This is the Hale House. Here and Mrs. Hale was down in Richmond. 
uh, about uh, 18, uh, in the 1840s, and she brought home with her, um, she purchased a black slave, Celia, and I tell the story. And uh, Mrs. Hale's, um, Celia worked for Mrs. Hale for about a year, and then she went out on her own. Uh, she did not, Mrs. Hale did not want to keep Celia as a slave. So again, Mount Rural, this is Toppins Lane, and on the left is High Street. Next, please. Okay, uh, we are very, very fortunate uh, in this community to have, you recognize this photo here? This was the first hospital in the community opened up in about 1881. And who made that possible? Yes, Anna Jakes. Anna Jakes um, lost to two, her uh, two brothers and sister, had some money. She was very, uh, you know, very upset and anxious about what to do with the money and uh, tell the story. She donated $25,000 in order to open up our first hospital. She did live, live uh, to see uh, the hospital open. And then in about 1904, land was purchased up on Highland Street. And this, this building is still uh, here, one of the original buildings of the Anna Jakes Hospital. Okay, next please. Oh, look at this photo. All right, think about this, think about this. Here's a hint right here. Here's a hint right here, that gazebo. Where do we have a gazebo? Yes, Akis in common. Look at all the paths. Now you can't see through it because of all the beautiful trees, many of them 100 and 200 years old. And then down here, you're looking all the way to Merrimack Street. And so what's, what's in this area now? Correct, yeah, the Little League and Pioneer League fields here. And over here on the left, great discovery here, big tenement building and businesses. And this was built by Henry Moulton. And you recognize the name Moulton Street or the Moultonville School years and years ago? That was Henry Moulton. All right, next please. And okay, this is a wonderful photograph. All right, let me count them. One, two roads, and on the right is three roads. This is three roads. On the left is Story Avenue, in the middle is Ferry Road, and on the right is Mosley Avenue. And this is a great shot of an electric trolley. Very cool photo. And there's a car right there. I like that car. All right, next please. And there's our castle, our one and only castle built by Henry Moulton. And um, he was a student of architecture. He had uh, traveled all throughout um, the United States. And he came back to this land because he was a descendant of the famous Moulton family. And what did they do? Uh, since uh, the late 1600s, the Moultons were silversmiths. Yes, many generations. And he inherited this land. He built this castle. And here's a, te and here's a teaser. There's a connection to Wonder Woman with this castle and family. And that's all I'm going to say. You're going to have to get the book to find out what that is. Okay, next, please. All right, tour six, the South End neighborhood. Again, there was so much in the South End neighborhood. Um, uh, I split it up into a couple tours. We have the artists, John and Agnes uh, Brown, uh, Dr. Henry Perkins, here we go, the Fourth Religious Society. Melnia Jones Cass uh, was a student here for a couple of years at Kelly School. And uh, she was, um, uh, uh, social into very much uh, social justice. And if you've heard of Mass and Cass Avenue in Boston, this is for uh, Melnia Jones Cass. Uh, and then Captain Stephen Bray, Ira McIntosh, another photographer. Okay, next please. Okay, look at this. Here's a hint. What is this gentleman doing here? Holding here on the right, and then over here on the right photograph, he is. 
Enoch Flanders, our town crier. And he was the one of the last uh, town criers in the country. And what's in the background? Do you recognize where he is? Yeah, this is Market Square right here at the foot of State Street. Enoch Flanders. Next, please. And okay, who's the gentleman on the right? Uh, I think was, he's the most photographed uh, gentleman person in the uh, mid late 1800s. Yeah, Frederick Douglass. And the church, where is this church located? Think, think, think. Here we go. The street is on the left is Prospect Street. And here is Fair Street. And in the foreground is Fruit Street. And this is the fourth religious society or known as the Prospect Street Church. Um, and Frederick Douglass, there's an advertising. Uh, Frederick Douglass came to town and he was speaking on uh, slavery um, uh, at the church. Okay, next please. We have, oh, I love this photo. Okay, all right. Now what are those posts sticking up in the air? What do you think they are? Where are we? Yeah, that's a ship. And the ship is parked at the Cushing's Wharf getting rigged. Those are the masts. Very cool. So if we're at Starboard Galley, we are on Fair Street right along here. But what is this here on the left? That's the Universalist Church. And what is up here on the steeple? Very famous weather vane. That's the angel Gabriel. Excuse me. <coughs> the angel Gabriel weather vane, which ended up on what church that we know in modern times? The People's Methodist down on Purchase Street. Yeah. And who started this church here? One of the founders? Brigadier General Adolphus Greeley's father, John Greeley. All right. Next, please. <coughs> oh, um, some of the stories I added in this volume <coughs> were African Americans. This is Edward Moses on the left, and this is the headlines. Uh, Blacks did get quite uh, a lot of coverage in the newspaper in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And as you can see, uh, this is uh, the headline. He's born a slave in the South, and he's lived in Newbyport. He lived here for about 50 years. This is his gravestone in Highland Cemetery on Hill Street. Black grave sites are spread throughout Highland Cemetery. I've identified about 10 or 11. And Edward worked uh, for the Greeley and Winder families. The Greeley uh, Brigadier uh, General Adolphus Greeley, his stepbrother, Stephen Greeley, he worked for. Uh, the Greeleys, and then also uh, the Winders, which they were connected in, in um, uh, marriage. And so this is uh, Mr. Moses' uh, grave site. I kind of cleaned it up uh, a few weeks ago. All right, next, please. Uh, south End, a little bit more. We've got the Old South. Um, Richard Plummer, the abolitionist. Tamsin Donna, uh, one of my favorite stories, a tough story. American Yacht Club, Candy Brown. Oh, I love Bethany and I love Candy Brown and uh, Oak Hill Cemetery. Okay, next please. And oh, how beautiful is this photo? Look at how clear that photograph is. Do you recognize this building here? We still, it's, here, it's still here today. As you walk along the Clipper City Rail Trail, this is, yes, the American Yacht Club. And who was it, this version, this um, building designed by our famous, one of our famous architects, and he restored Williamsburg, was hired by the Rockefeller. Yeah, Williams Greg Perry uh, designed this building. Beautiful photograph. All right, next please. And oh, here it is, another one, huh? Unbelievable. Okay, in the background is, you know this, Plum Island. And what is this large brick building? Think about it, Charles Street. Yeah, the James Steen Mill. James Steen Mill started out as a cotton mill and then eventually a shoe factory and 
uh, different businesses and, and now um, apartment uh, condo building. And where do you think uh, the photograph was uh, taken? Where are we standing? The Old South Church steeple. Yeah, yeah, beautiful photograph. All right, next please. And oh, now this is a tricky one. This is a tricky one. I went to junior high here. Jackman School, yes. And uh, it was torn down uh, in the late 1970s. And what is this area known as today? It is Atwood Park, named for Margaret Atwood, who was uh, probably the first. Uh, she lost her husband when he was young. And she took over as a woman in the early 1800s, um, uh, took over the wharves uh, and the warehouses, and she was a ship owner. And she opened up her home, which is on the corner of Atwood and Lyme, uh, a girls' school in her home. Thank you, Mrs. Atwood. Next, please. And oh, well, is Bethany. Um, Doro's book, um, Evan Bradley, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. Bethany is a beautiful writer. And uh, Evan Bradley, who died, um, you can see, <laughs> killed in the Battle of the Little Woods in France, World War I. Um, and so uh, Bethany, like many of us, we just drive by and she drove by this big old rock. Uh, a million times and then finally she decided to stop and read and think okay who is Evan Bradbury a few years later she ended up with a, uh, a beautiful book on uh, Evan next please okay the way to Joppa and Flatiron Point Joppa a South End neighborhood James Steen Mill um, okay the Flake Yards the People's Methodist Church Emma Andrews Library Rope Box uh, shipyards, um, flat iron point. Okay, next please. All right, you know this, right? You know this? Look, 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 what's there on the left now? Joppa Park, yes. And in the foreground are the railroad tracks, which is now the rail, the rail trail. And in 1871, the city railroad cut through alongside Marches Hill, and came right through the South Joppa neighborhood and went around uh, the waterfront. And this helped open the industrial uh, phase revolution of Newbyport with the coal industry and, and so forth. Yeah, next please, Water Street. There we are, okay, the tide is out. Growing up, this was known as the flip. And you can see here over the left, this is a fishnet. And over on the right uh, to get your bearings would be the seawall now, okay? And so today this is still used for kayaks and boats and fishermen and so forth. Uh, and uh, it's a great place, spent a lot of time down here. Next, please. All right, what are we looking at? You can probably might be able to read on the left here. Many, many neighborhoods had these. This is a bakery and it's Tibbetts and, and Hicks Bakery. And if you can see on the right, and I don't know if you can see, uh, there is uh, a railroad sign. And if you get your barons, railroad signs. So this is where the railroad tracks came through. And we are looking at the corner of Purchase and Harrison Street. So this is where the rail trail cuts through and continues on across Purchase Street. I got a great story from Janet Pratt, who just passed away in the past uh, year or so. She was in her 90s. And I quote Janet, I try to include as many quotes on every single write-up, at least one, one quote. I, I try to find something. And uh, Janet uh, writes about her memories of uh, Joppa, and she wrote specifically about one where during Thanksgiving, Mr. Hicks would uh, cook uh, the neighbor's uh, turkeys in his big ovens. And she remembers as a child that she was, uh, had a little wagon and her dad put the turkey in the wagon and she got to pull the wagon to mix Mr. Hicks bakery uh, so they could uh, get it into the oven for Thanksgiving dinner. 
All right, next, please. Uh, okay, this is a really tough one. This is a tough one. All right, <clears throat> so what we're looking at is the noise comb factory. And the noise started um, in the late 1600s, 1700s. The family descendants eventually came to Newbyport. And the comb factory is they uh, made decorative combs, OK? And believe it or not, the noise family, uh, no, it is nothing. You, you can believe it. Uh, they invented machinery for uh, combs. Instead of doing it by hand, they invented the machinery. And people from all over the United States would come to New Report or consult with the Noyes family uh, to get better techniques to how to make combs. This, this really was a happening place. And so where we are is on Chestnut Street. And in background, you can't see, but this is where the railroad uh, trains cross. And this is where the uh, rail trail crosses on uh, Chestnut Street. And there are a couple houses here now. Uh, this building was taken down in the 40s. Okay, next, please. And can you picture it? You're driving on Water Street, going towards town. And this is what's known as Flat Iron Point right here. And that's where all the clam shacks used to be. There's one uh, small house uh, that remains, but this is known as Flat Iron Point. This is Union Street on the left and Water Street on the right. All right, next please. Okay, to the sea, we're headed. John Wind is uh, the photographer, Spencer Pierce Little. You can see over uh, the fields, uh, Plum Island Airport, the hotel, lighthouses, the Life Saving Service, Coast Guard, Knobs, and Sea Haven, and Grape Island. Okay, next, please. And here we are. Now, many people don't know, but Mr. Burgess and some a couple other folks, uh, there was experimental plane flights on Plum Island, now in the area of Parker River Wildlife uh, Refuge. But they were experiment, experimenting out on the uh, salt marshes. Next, please. Ah, wonderful photograph, isn't that? Wonderful. All right, so what are we looking at? What are we looking at? This is now known as the center right here. All right, this is Northern Boulevard. This is the dance hall, very popular place for many, many years. This is no longer here. Then on the left, um, this is the parking lot on the corner. And look at the view, you're looking north toward the mouth of the river here. And look at all the cottages. Plum Island had a lot of cottages and it was for uh, the hunters and the fishermen. They did not live uh, year round here. And so it's kind of cool to see the sand uh, dunes and the small cottages. Next, please. Look at this aerial photograph. What are we looking at? You know, right there in the center is the lighthouse. This is Northern Boulevard, big parking lot here now. And there you can see the cottages right along here. The basin is on the right and uh, the mouth of the river is to your left. Look at this whole area here. And this is the area of Reservation Terrace where they're often underwater <laughs> during bad storms. Next, please. So there were communities um, in what's now known as the Parker River Wildlife Refuge. And uh, this is a community that the late Nancy Ware uh, wrote uh, in her, about in her book, Plum Island, The Way It Was, a wonderful book. And her family had, um, Rod Grass Ware family, had a little uh, cottage down here. And uh, the communities of the Knobs and <clears throat> I'll say the Knobs, um, the, the hunters, there was the men who were going down there. And then finally the women and the mother said, well, wait a minute, 
we want to go during the summer. And so they invited themselves and they had a wonderful summer and they would hang out and play and obviously swim. Isn't that a great photograph? The lower right of the women and the young, young girls swimming. So this is known as the knobs. And Nancy used to spend time down here in her family's cottage. None of those buildings exist. When the refuge became um, established uh, one by one, as families passed away, uh, they took down uh, the cottages. And this is a typical salt hay right here on the marsh. Okay, next please. And what a wonderful, wonderful uh, place here. Uh, anybody recognize this? And what is this? Mr. and Mrs. Harrington and Havel started this summer camp in the 40s for children afflicted with polio. Some of you may recognize or know uh, Ann Harrington Lagasse, and she and her uh, family spent summers here, and eventually her parents took over the camp. And this is just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. I helped organize um, a reunion, uh, well, it's probably been now eight or nine years ago, of the uh, camp staff and of the campus. And they just absolutely, they were free uh, for a summer, uh, just having a wonderful time. This is a salt water pool, and they also went out on the beach. Here in the lower right center here is the Knobs life-saving stations. The life-saving stations had men and had boats, and we had over a hundred shipwrecks on Plum Island, a lot of boats in distress. And um, this was stationed again um, down in the Parker River Wildlife uh, to help those in distress. And next, that's it. Okay, that's it folks. So um, I hope to get the book out, it will be out in the fall. Um, lots of uh, editing going on now and creating uh, the tours and um, getting excited about it. Getting excited that, about it. That okay. was awesome. That was so much fun. All right, we've got just a minute for another question. And uh, so we've got a question, what are the years approximately on the shipbuilding slides. I know that's a tough one because there were- Shipbuilding, uh, those were probably mid, uh, oh, uh, wait a minute, let me think, let me think of it. Okay, photography, mid-1800s, uh, mid uh, maybe to late 1800s. So uh, probably the 1860s or 70s. Yep, absolutely. So uh, the, I know the John Courier, you, it wasn't a John Courier shipyard. Was it, was that the Edith Symington? Was that the it name of that? Symington, yeah. That was William, I believe it's William Courier. There was a okay. lot of couriers, but uh, <laughs> that was, uh, the, and that was about the last big one launched in 1901, the Edith Symington. Schooner, awesome. four master schooner, beautiful. What an incredible photograph that is. Everyone standing around waiting to see this yeah. thing go flying into the river. <laughs> Yeah, you, can, yeah. you can see why that was really a community event. How wonderful. All right, let's uh, let's take one more question. Uh, let's see, does the book include Jackman's Beach Tree Place and Shipyard? The Jackman Shipyard? I don't know about the beach tree, but I do write about George Jackman and his family. Yes, he built uh, and his brothers built uh, probably the most variety of different vessels. Uh, and George Jackman was also a mayor during the 1860s. Um, yes. So I don't know about the beech tree. I don't, I don't know what that's about. Hmm. Well, we'll have to look into it. Yes. Sounds like a job for the Museum of Old Newberry. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Well, with that, Glee, I'm going to say thank you for all you do for this community, and thank you especially for uh, what you do for the Newburyport Literary Festival. It has been a great pleasure. Uh, I think my my uh, slide advancing finger is broken. <laughs> so many wonderful slides. I'm sorry about those couple hiccups there, but um, your, your, uh, your audience and your community are very grateful. So we will see you very soon and have a wonderful rest of the day. Okay, thank you everyone. Bye everyone. Bye.